Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Wednesday afternoon. If you're one of the people on this channel that I actually like, I hope you're having a much better Wednesday afternoon. Hell, even if you're one of the people on this channel that I hate, I still hope you're having a better Wednesday afternoon than I am. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be following up on some videos I've done on this channel about a company called Future Motion that does a lot of anti-right to repair stuff. One of their devices is called the One Wheel, which is a one-wheeled electric skateboard. And one of the points of contention we've had is that it will brick itself, not if you replace the battery. Not if you modify the battery, if you unplug the battery. That's right. Unplugging the battery and then plugging it back in will brick the device. Not modifying, not replacing, just doop, doop. That's it. Wasn't like that in older models, but it is now. The CEO has come out in full defense of this thing that they're doing, even though they have one repair center to handle their hundreds of thousands of customers from around the world. And the fact that they are not supporting legacy devices, meaning that at some point, because all these lithium-ion batteries are going to die someday, this device is going to be uh, a doorstop, a $2,200 doorstop. But here's the thing. In spite of everything that we have discussed about this company, in spite of this three hours of stuff that we've dived into here in this interview with Josh Haley and what we've talked about in, the, in these videos, there's actually more. It does indeed get worse, and there is going to be a lot that we're going to be getting into in a future video, but this one I wanted to get to before I had the chance to do a follow-up interview with Josh. They're serializing the motors. What that means is that you cannot replace your motor unless you send it back to future motion. We're not even talking about the battery at this point because they were saying, well, batteries could explode. Can the motor explode too? I've opened motors on this channel before, and you could see these videos. They're usually a couple of hours long where I'll open up a motor that's maybe gotten a little bit of salt water in it that may have a bad nylon gear or something like that, and we'll have some fun going through it and fit, trying to figure out how to make it work. And um, yeah, they're putting serial numbers into the motor, and if the controller sees it's a different serial number, it, it won't work. So even if you could get a motor, which they won't sell you, but even if you could find a motor on some eBay or Craigslisted board, you're not able to put it into your device. Motor. You can't replace that on a $2,200 vehicle that you bought and paid for. But here's the thing. It actually gets better because there are actually use scenarios where they not only will you not be able to replace it yourself because it's serialized, but they won't fix it for you for any amount of money. You, you can't make this stuff up. So I'm going to read this to you. This is from a customer that decided to reach out and share their experience. I have blocked out their name and ticket number and stuff like that just for privacy purposes. So I'm going to read this experience, and you tell me what you think of the future that we're all about to sign up to live in. So it says here, motor lost in shipping in need of replacement. Hi. So I received my treaded GT a month ago, and I've been loving it. However, I've been wondering how the slick rides, and I have a buddy out of state with a slick GT and has been wondering the same about my treaded. To be clear here, treaded and slick, these are different types of tires. So even though they have the same skateboard, one of them is a different tire than the other, and they wanted to see how it felt. To avoid having to needlessly swap the tires, we decided to ship our motors to each other. Unfortunately, my motor has been evidently lost in shipping. A case has been made and I've been working with them to try to find it, but they genuinely have no clue where it could be, and it really doesn't look like I'll be able to get it back, leaving me with a board with no motor. Additionally, I have received my friend's motor, only to find that connecting his OEM and unmodified, completely stock motor throws an error, indicating that the motors are likely serialized and paired to the controller. This means that even if more boards were out in the wild, I wouldn't be able to source a new motor from a different completely stock board to use on my own. This leaves me with a practically brand new $2,200 board that's basically a brick, all because a single component got lost in shipping. I would also like to note it was recently announced by Future Motion that do-it-yourself tire changes, which involve removing the motor, are an accepted form of maintenance. So I haven't necessarily done anything here that voids my board's full warranty. Of course, I'm not expecting you guys to replace an entirely lost component under warranty. All that I would ask is that I'm able to purchase a replacement motor to get it back up and running, so that my new board is able to ride again and doesn't become e-waste for no good reason. While I strongly degree disagree with the decision to pair the motor to the controller, I assume this pairing lock would result in service requiring me to send my board in to be paired with a new motor, which I am willing to do. This is all a very unfortunate situation, and I sincerely hope you understand my position and are able to assist me in order to get my new GT back up and running. Please let me know how you're able to help. So he's saying, listen, I, I lost my motor. I am willing to pay you guys. I am willing to pay you for a motor, or I'm willing to send my board to you to get it fixed. I prefer to not send the board in, but he's willing to do that to get the board fixed with a motor because they have serialized it so that you can't change it yourself. The response from Future Motion. Hi, 
Thanks for reaching out. And we're sorry to hear about the issues that you've been having disassembling your board. We are unable to ship separate parts of the board. This is to ensure that all components are installed properly and that all components of the board are operating within specification. We strongly recommend our customers not repair or alter their one wheel's internal components or structure. All repairs, in warranty or not, are done at our repair facility in San Jose, California. Issues found to be unresolved remotely will be offered to be brought into our facility with a prepaid shipping label. After evaluation, we would be able to reach out with an invoice for the repairs and shipping if the issue is not within warranty. We are unable to fix this issue remotely, but we can help repair your board if it's shipped to our facility. Now, you could tell that there was a bit of a canned response in there because they're talking about issues that they're trying to resolve remotely. I don't know how they're going to install a motor remotely. Uh, that's not going to work. So he decides to, um, to, to, to get back to them and just kind of probe a little bit. So to be clear, from that response, it sounds like he could have shipped the board to Future Motion and had them fix the motor. That's what I come away from with this. I come away from this thinking that he doesn't want to ship it in, but he's willing to, and he could ship that board in to have Future Motion install a motor into it and then send it back after charging him money, which would be somewhat reasonable. Now, the customer decides to follow up just to see what's going on, and we're going to see that that's not actually the case. Apologies for the follow-up questioning, but is there any reason why I can't, without sending my board in, get any kind of idea of what to expect when it comes to replacement costs, or even a confirmation that you guys are willing and able to replace the motor at all? There's nothing to, quote, evaluate, end quote, in this situation. The board is perfectly functional, unmodified, and practically new. It's just missing the motor since it was lost in shipping. All I'm in need of is a replacement motor, and whether that's sent to me directly or done so in-house with me sending in my motorless board, I see no reason why I can't get a better idea of what to expect before sending it across the country and being responsible for shipping costs bare minimum. Now you know how most people ask when they ask a hospital how much does it cost to deliver a baby. <laughs> At the very least, a confirmation that this replacement is one that you guys are willing to do would be greatly appreciated. Please let me know what insight you're able. Uh, I look forward to hearing back. And then the customer service rep says, hi again. I just checked in with our technicians and I regret to inform you that we would not be able to provide service in this instance as we require all original internal components regardless of their state of disrepair to be present. We apologize for the inconvenience and wish you success in recovering your lost package. So they're telling, okay, not only have we serialized the motor to the controller so that you can't replace your motor yourself, which is insane. I have replaced motor cores on my electric bikes for the past four years. No problem replacing a motor core. This is the easiest basic building block of the... Oh God, this is so stupid. But they're not even willing to do it. They're not even willing to say, okay, it's a $2,200 electric skateboard. We are willing to reinstall a motor into it for $1,500. They just say no. What a sack of shit company. And again, one of the things that everybody's going to say is don't buy from them. Don't buy from them. Don't buy from them. Honestly, I don't disagree with you there. Don't buy from them. But here's the thing. When people see that this company is getting the sales volume that they had in the past, somebody's going to copy this. Somebody's going to copy this. You know that somebody else is going to try this shit. They're already doing it when it comes to laptops and cell phones. Serialization is already a thing. And I hope, I really hope that this kind of uh, brings out what bullshit it is when they say, this is to make sure you don't get an counterfeit or knockoff part. You have to understand that that entire line of reasoning is just bullshit. It's always been bullshit. It's been about security. Well, security of somebody's finances. And it's been about control. It's been about ensuring that you buy a new one. At least in the cases of companies like this. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever for you to not be able to replace a motor controller and for them to not be willing to do the replace, not motor controller, mo replace a motor. Sorry if I'm not editing this. I don't have my DaVinci dongle anymore, so I, oh, well, this is the best that you get. One take, baby. You don't have, there's no good reason to not be able to replace a motor. There's no good reason to serialize, you know, an iPhone screen to an iPhone. There's no good reason to serialize any of this type of stuff in a manner in, in a manner where you're not able to just drop a new OEM part in. The idea that was been presented to us is that this is to ensure that the parts that you're getting are OEM. And when the manufacturer starts serializing parts and components and they're not even willing to sell you an OEM, they're not willing to do the repair themselves with a hefty profit margin. That tells you what this is about. It's about the security of their profit when they, it comes to selling you a new product. It is about controlling what it is you do with what you own. Then it's bullshit. It, people shouldn't accept this. I don't think the customers of this product should accept this. I don't think the people that have pre-ordered this product should accept this as a level of service. We are going to be following up with a proper video. Once I find that 
fucking Da Vinci dongle that I lost. And also, once I'm able to make time to visit Josh at his at his repair facility in Manchester, New Hampshire again, to go over a bit more of this, because Kyle did release a 10-minute video, and we have about a 24-page well-cited response to that video with a lot of questions and a lot of points that we'd like to bring up to all of you. And this was going to be one of those points, but I wasn't able to wait because honestly, just reading this email pissed me off so much and incensed me so much that I, I just... I want it to get it out in its own dedicated video. What do you think of the idea of serializing a motor to a controller? What do you then think about not selling that motor? What do you then think about the company saying, we won't even allow you to pay us to fix it, and then saying the $2,200 product that you have is now a steaming pile of dog shit as a result of our practices? Very curious what you all think. Let me know, and again, I hope you're all having a better afternoon than I've had so far. I'll see you in the next video. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.